names carried the bloodline of the native people who inhabited this area centuries before English contact and settlement. In June 1608, Captain John Smith explored the bay side of the eastern shore, noting the number of fighting men of native villages and planting crosses up the rivers for the English crown. Smith and his party traveled up the eastern shore and entered the Pocomoke Sound, and in search of water, the party continued up the noble Pocomoke River. It was on the Pocomoke River that Smith's party visited Waikokomoko, a palisaded town in King's House. Smith's journal states the people of Waikokomoko were different in stature, and they spoke a different dialect than the Akahonic groups he had recently visited further south. Archival sources, oral accounts, and prevailing life ways of our endogamous community aid us in our quest to reestablish our history, culture, and traditions. Research conducted by the Mer at the Merlin Archives, National Archives, universities, museums, and government agencies has enabled me and my assistants, Mr. Goldsboro is a prime one of my assistants, uh, to document the story of the Pocomokes before contact and through the ensuing centuries. The Pocomokes were a paramountcy, consisting of the principal band of the Pocomoke and the Maramsco, Quandaquan, Anamasi, Manokin, Aquinica, Naswadox, and Ginkatig bands. These names are sometimes indistinguishable from the names of local rivers and places. In geographic terms, the Pocomokes historically inhabited the counties of northern Accomac, Somerset, southern Wicomico, and the western and southern portions of Worcester. Its neighbors were the Onancocks to the south and the bands of Nanticoke and Massateague to the north. Respected scholars have noted an association between the Pocomokes and native peoples across the Chesapeake Bay. This association was mentioned in a statement by a Piscataway leader, and I believe that was either in the late 1500s or early 1600s when he made that statement. We gather today at the place of our ancestors, where Pocomokes and English struck a bargain of friendship and comity. The colonists and fur traders needed food and shelter, and the Pocomokes sought steel tools and ready-made clothing, such as blankets, called match coats, which would be similar to what I would have on today here. Now this was the basis for the original friendship. However, larger forces and circumstances soon conflicted with this arrangement, especially the commercial farming of tobacco and salt by the colonists and their importation of human labor from England, Africa, and the West Indies. Native people were systematically pushed to swamps and remote necks, similar to what we uh, have between the Pocomoke and, and the Tangier Sounds in this area. These were areas undesirable for tobacco and salt production, and they, and they left the native people with limited resources for foraging and hunting. And on one account, confiscating from an animasic of the Pocomoke, the hides he had trapped on patented land. The colonists who sought and held land patents turned a deaf ear to the treaty rates, rights of the native people. Uh, there were uh, a series of treaties between the Pocomokes and the uh, province of Maryland. Um, the last uh, treaty, I believe, was in 1742. Unions occurred between native people and colonists and possibly their servants, which accounts for native bloodlines being carried, being carried among some local families today who, have, who live and make their livelihood as generations before them. However, by 1700, the majority of the Pocomotes congregated at, at Aquinica. Aquinica is the area uh, between what we now know as uh, Maramsco, uh, and going north uh, as far as where um, the area we call Costin Road, and that, that area. That was all the land that was called Aquinica. <coughs> uh, and
And then, following that, they moved on to reservations, primarily Assam and Akonsan. They were soon confronted with the same fate, forcing them to scatter northward, eventually to Pennsylvania, and possibly to New York and Canadian provinces. We have recently, within the last year, um, found archival documents of the Pocomokes and the family of William Penn uh, in Pennsylvania, where um, the, um, the Penn family was acting on behalf of the Pocomokes so that they could uh, continue to trap and, uh, and live their uh, lifestyle. It pleases me to know that our local church mentioned the Lawson Native Connection in 1910 while celebrating its centennial. Mr. James Mooney also documented the Lawson Native Connection in surveys he conducted under a commission with the Smithsonian Institution over a hundred years ago. Today, the Lawson family is intertwined genealogically with local residents bearing the surnames of Nelson, Moore, Tyler, Howard, and others. Growing up here, truly the land of plenty. I am reminded of how ordinary it was to head to the landing and dig manos along the banks of Jenkins Creek. To run to Carol Nelson's store, which is a short distance uh, toward town from here, uh, for candy, soda pop, or cookies. To hear the waterman tell their stories and watch them playing dominoes to walk the tidal bank toward Low Woods and Eagle Point to hunt ducks, to borrow my cousin William Skiff and a bushel basket to dip crabs, and most of all to enjoy visiting my grandmother's kindred across the creek. Those were good memories. I would be too gracious, however, if I didn't mention that my family was not always treated so kindly by some neighbors. Time erases much, but unfortunately some instances, some incidents endure. I won't recite further on this except to note the fact and to say I know firsthand how discrimination hurts and how it damages folks. As I prepared for my talk today, I weighed how I should dress. I decided to put on the attire of a Pokemon as he would be dressed at the time of contact with the colonists. As you can see, I'm wearing leather moccasins, fringe leggings, a fringe coat, and an English hat adorned with a feather, and also a match coat. To the purists, my dress may not be a perfect depiction, but it does demonstrate the native reliance upon nature's bounty and the trade with colonists and the fur traders. One last thing I'd like to import, uh, import is that the Pocomokes were environmentalists, intelligent and spiritual. They saw beauty in nature, not to idolize, but to give thanks. This is often misunderstood as being animalistic or uncivil. Nothing could be further from the truth. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak about the Pocomokes. I'll be glad to take questions if you have any.